And what is mindfulness? I mean, we should say what a classical understanding of it is. A classical understanding of mindfulness is, is fairly accurately and readily describable as having a clear-minded third person or outer perspective on your inner awareness, a, a clear-minded observational perspective. Um, and when you have that clear-minded observational perspective, you start to see that all these attachments are, are, are not really real, etc. I mean, as soon as you say that the, the attachment to self loosens, the attachment to self starts to fall away, then, then that, is, that is right. That is, that's the concept. That happens. It's, in fact, it's not, that's a concept, all right, but it's not experienced as a concept. That's a description of reality. Well, look, I mean, as a person who has spent a long time using methods like this with people with obsessive compulsive disorder, yes, I am a strong supporter of you are not your thought. <laughs> I mean, because, I mean, I mean, that's why obsessive compulsive disorder, I, that was, uh, that was a blessing that I had, that I could see that this was a good field for, for, for using this practice exactly because people are getting these, you know, terrible thoughts intruding on, into their consciousness. They don't know where they're coming from and there's a propensity to identify with it on some level, which is great suffering and, 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 and quite maladaptive. So you want people to realize that thought that's coming in, I mean, that is not you. I mean, it's one. It, it, it's it's a very early way of of using this not self concept therapeutically. So yeah, I mean, you are not your brain means you are not your thoughts in that way, and that's where that's where the interface of the non judgmental and judgmental aspect. Uh, that's you see an intersection point right there because you need you need the the non judgmental aspect to access the content. You really won't be able to access the content if you're in sort of this, you know, filtering. You can't, so you can't be in a filtering mode or you won't even get the content. I mean, one of the advantages of obsessive compulsive disorder as a field to learn is they intrude right in. And, and, and so then the person really needs to realize this is not me. But, but one of the reasons why non -judgmental, a non-judgmental perspective is in fact very important and necessary in mindfulness is you won't find out what's going on inside of you. You won't get your inner process. You won't be connected to it. If, if you're filtering and filtering and, and being judgmental with the scare quotes version of it, of going, oh, I shouldn't be thinking that. Oh, I shouldn't be thinking this. I mean, you're not gonna learn if, you're not gonna get the information. You're not gonna literally get the data if, if, if you're in that mindset. So you have to be non-judgmental in the sense that you let it come in but then you have to be in an assessment mode. So, so, so it's judgmental in the good sense of the word, in the non-scare quote sense of the word. You know, the assessment, so, you know, discerning. It's judgmental as a discerning mode. And, and, and that's when you really start to go, this is, first of all, this isn't me. Mindfulness is always good. <laughs> I mean, that quote is very accurate, but, but it, it has to be real mindfulness. But real mindfulness is very attainable. I mean, real mindfulness is very doable. I, everybody has the capacity to sort of look inside themselves and see what's going on and, and, and make rational assessments about what to do with it. I mean, so in that way, mindfulness is, is, is very good. It's always good. And now, a very significant sort of way of putting it in a scientific frame, which in, a, in our era people like, and it's fine, is it really does rewire your brains so that you're, you're, not, lo you're not locked into habit loops. You use your habit lo loops effectively. You decide how you want to use those habit loops, and especially on the emotional stuff. Your emotional brain is no longer has the power that it did. You still have an emotional brain, you still have emotions, but you're aware of them and you can modulate them. And it absolutely strengthens. Mindfulness strengthens executive function. Mindfulness strengthens executive brain so you can plan more clearly. You remember things better. Your decisions are more clear cut. You, you, you're aware of how you're thinking. It, it, it increases your awareness of how you're thinking, your awareness of what you're paying attention to, and your awareness of how mindfulness, how mindful you're being. So it's very empowering.